We're going to take you live now to City Hall where Deputy Mayor Jennifer McKelvey is speaking about the 2023 Housing Action Plan. Let's listen in live. Housing Action Plan marks a big step forward in getting housing built and getting it built faster in the City of Toronto. And I want to thank Councillor Bradford, the Chair of the Planning and Housing Committee, for joining me today and for all the heavy lifting that he's done on this work. And we're also joined by Greg Lintern, the Chief Planner and Executive Director of City Planning, and Abby Bond, the Executive Director of the Housing Secretariat. And I would also like to start by recognizing former Mayor John Tory for his strong leadership on this plan and starting us on this ambitious path to get housing built. His tireless efforts last fall set the groundwork for this plan to be approved by Council, and I look forward to building on it, hitting top gear, as our housing staff say, uh, with, with Council in the months ahead. We've made good progress in the last eight years on housing, but we do know more needs to be done. And we want people from all walks of life to be able to call Toronto home, including both those who are here and newcomers. Back in December, Council voted to approve the Housing Action Plan, which takes a more aggressive approach to address the acute affordability and housing crisis facing our city. City staff were asked to return this March with a clear work plan for how it could be implemented. Staff have risen to the occasion, and next week at Executive Committee, the Action Plan will be on the table. The Housing Action Plan begins the process of updating the city's regulations so we can meet or exceed the target of actually building 285,000 homes over the next decade. This plan accommodates all kinds of housing, from student housing to affordable housing to housing targets for the Portlands and the waterfront. This plan will also remove exclusionary zoning that has focused growth in just a few areas of the city and prevented Torontonians from having diverse housing choices. The plan is also focused on leveraging public lands to unlock more housing supply. It prioritizes the preservation of existing rental homes and supports the development of a range of purpose-built rental homes through the new housing policies and programs. The plan also supports the community sector. This includes the nonprofit and co-op housing providers in Toronto so that they can grow their housing stock. The housing plan is bold, it's innovative, and it's aggressive. And I have every confidence that the plans outlined in this report will address the housing crisis. And while the Housing Action Plan outlines many initiatives to be taken over the next three years, the majority of actions can move forward this year and in 2024. Later this month, the City will release its new publicly accessible housing dashboard. This digital portal will track the City's development pro process and provide easily accessible information on where the City stands on housing projects across the City. This dashboard will make our housing plan and future goals transparent for all members of the public. Other critical initiatives will start as soon as April, including a recommendation to enable more multiplexes, up to four housing units, which will allow for gentle density in all Toronto neighbourhoods. An update to the city's affordable housing programs, such as Housing Now and Open Door. A framework to support growth and modernization in the community and co-op housing sector. And we know that the time is now to take big strides towards activating all orders of government, as well as developers, landowners, housing providers, and we need to build homes now. This is an incredible opportunity during this council term to update and modernize housing policy here in Toronto in a way that facilitates the delivery of more housing supply, choice and affordability for everyone. And we can do so in a way that continues to build strong, healthy communities that support our city's climate goals. This plan will be good for our city and good for the people of Toronto, the people who live here now, who want their families to continue to be able to live here, and the people who want to call Toronto home. I'd now like to introduce Councillor Brad Bradford, Chair of the Planning and Housing Committee, to say a few words. Well, thanks very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. It's, uh, it's great to be here with you. I want to start by offering my sincere thanks to Deputy Mayor McKelvey. Uh, there's no doubt that she has stepped up in such a tremendous way for a challenging time here in our city and is uh, helping us all move forward. So uh, thank you very much, Deputy Mayor. As chair of the Planning and Housing Committee, I am incredibly proud to be here standing up this body of work uh, that is online today for you to take a look at. And as you'll see from reading the report, there is absolutely no intention to take our foot off the pedal. In fact, here in Toronto, we are going full gas on housing. 
The promise of this city is predicated on the idea that if you want to build your life here, we want to have you. That means a home for everyone in the neighborhoods where they want to live, a home that they can afford, and one that meets their needs. Whether it's young couples looking to start a family, seniors who are looking to downsize and move into retirement, folks who are stepping off the tarmac at Pearson to build a new life in this country, or young people who are just looking to get started. The journey begins with a lock and key, the dignity of a roof over your head, and a place to call your own. What we have in front of us today is a bold plan that just a few short years ago would have been completely unthinkable. It's a testament to what is possible when we're brave enough to try something new. We all know it's time to break the status quo here at City Hall. And that means bringing an end to exclusionary zoning and simplifying the overly complicated set of rules that govern what individuals can build for themselves and their families. It means rethinking the outdated assumptions that we've held about how a city should grow and evolve so that we can continue to be a magnet for talent, investment, and immigration. It means that making sure our own policy objectives, the rules that we put in place as a city, are in line with our broader goals of affordability, sustainability, and equity, rather than being counter to them, which has too often, in fact, been the case. And for our part here at the City of Toronto, it's not just about getting out of the way, it's about proactively unlocking housing opportunities. That's why we're forging new partnerships with the not-for-profit and co-op housing organizations to help them build the capacity to increase the supply of community housing. It means a complete revamping of the Housing Now initiative to actually get shovels in the ground on new affordable rental projects. It means the creation of a robust public land strategy to ensure that we are using every last square inch of city-owned land to meet our demands for housing goals. In advance of the Housing Action Plan report coming to Executive on March 21st, I've had the opportunity to do a citywide tour with our chief planner, Greg Lintern, to go out and visit our planning districts. And so far, as you've seen, I've been out to Scarborough, I've been out to Etobicoke, and we will be going to North York and the downtown planning segment as well to hear directly from our front lines team who will be implementing the plan to get their feedback and let them know that I stand behind them. I want them to know that the deputy mayor, myself and council will stand behind them as they take the plan that's in front of us today and turn the words into action. I want them to know that we're taking the politics out of housing because we know the future prosperity of our city absolutely depends on it and they're gonna lead the charge on this front. It's important to remember, for everyone who wants to call Toronto home, now and in the future, we are gonna make certain that you have a place to call home because Toronto is not Toronto without you. I'd like to thank again our Deputy Mayor for all of the incredible work she's doing, taking the reins, leading the city forward, and of course, our tremendous staff team uh, in city planning, led by Greg Lintern and the Housing Sec Secretariat, Abigail Bond, for the work they are doing. It is some of the most important stuff here in the city, and uh, it's been a huge honor to work with them. So looking forward to doing the report at committee next week, and I'll turn it back to the Deputy Mayor for questions. Thank you very much. Report chalking this up as a very big deal. Uh, when you look at the plan itself, the report, sorry, what's going to executive next week is a fairly straightforward recommendation for annual reporting back on the plan. There's not a lot of meat other than that for what's actually happening as a result of this debate right now. So what's the, what's the there there? What, what's actually happening today that we should care about? Well, I think this is about an accountability framework for housing. So there is a work plan that will say what will happen over the next few years through the rest of the term. There are ambitious targets for 285,000 homes in the next 10 years. And it's also uh, outlining the release of the dashboard that will happen so that there's transparency for the public on where we are with things. Uh, the other things in the report are laying out the different components and pieces that need to happen so that we can have a more streamlined process for approvals for housing in the City of Toronto. So this is very much the framework, the umbrella of where we need to go. And uh, we're going to have many more reports next month in April at Planning and Housing, but also in the months uh, to follow after that as well. Deputy Mayor, the um, report at the very bottom of it, the summary mentions that Bill 23's impacts are still very present here. And frankly, the city won't be able to accomplish these goals if it doesn't have assurances from the province that it's going to be made whole for the loss of, of development charges. Where are those discussions? 
Well, it's very much at the forefront of every discussion we have with the province. In fact, I'll be meeting with the Minister of Finance today. I will remind him of that promise around Bill 23. We are working with them around the audit in the terms of that audit. They have said that they want to have a full accounting, a full look at uh, the costs that we think we will be incurred by us, uh, the lost revenue. Um, but they have made that commitment to keep us whole. And uh, we're going to try to hold them to that as much as we can. Not yet. Uh, I think that we have to watch the, the conversations that happen with the province closely. They did come through uh, for us on last year's funding that we needed for our 2022 COVID hangover shortfall, so to speak. Uh, so they have stepped up for 2022, and I'm hopeful that they'll step up for 2023 and also hold, uh, hold themselves to account for the promise they made about making us whole around Bill 23.